okay, as long as we can race downhill. Okay, as long as we can race downhill. Hello guys, so this uh, Peppa rig or yeah, it's a Peppa rig was a huge success. It was really unexpected. That's why I will make here a video to uh, show you how it is made, how it is rigged, how the drivers are made, etc. Before we start, I put this file on Gumroad for sale for $5. The complete rig of uh, Andy, the alien. And also I think I forgot to delete this piggy folder here. So I guess it will be a bonus for you to check it on Gumroad. I'm also preparing another download of uh, this rig, this mesh rig that supports shadow supports shape keys and works from the front and from the back you can check the video here above about all the features of this rig and i'll put it for sale on gumroad soon thank you all the people who are willing to support this channel or already supported it and let's start the guide so this is all what the rig can do you can change the nose shape here in pippa rig we have a nose that wrinkles when she snores for the eyes when we have the x here enabled we can close both eyes together but we can also close each eye separately and we can move the irises like this also together or separately and we have this bone that can control the shape of the mouth and this one that can control the size of the mouth and also the shin and this cheek circle so we have this bone the head bone that can of course rotate the head these bones to control the arms and forearms and this one to change the shape of the hand this one is to rotate the body and also it can move separately from the legs as you can see. This is because I noticed that Pippa Pig will have her body go down without the legs moving and I added the root for the body. This one can make her crouch and also can help her to jump and as you can see we have the shadow that gets smaller when she jumps. This root bone of course controls everything and we have the IK legs. So let's take a look at these legs here. We have a bone constraint added to this bone. You choose in target your armature. In bone here you choose an IK bone that is this one and also you will need a pole target. So you choose your armature again and you choose your pole bone here and this pole will control the bending of the knee and also the rotation of the leg. You may need to change the angle here sometimes I think by default it's 90 degrees and it will get you this yeah a bone like that looks this way so i changed this to 180 and the chain length needs to be two for our case you can use it to flip the leg like this you may need your feet to be crossed or to look to opposite directions in the original pepper rig i didn't have poles but i noticed that when i move my legs here sometimes the knee will bend in the opposite direction with the pole it works better and uh, this 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 one and this one will need to have no parents from these bones here but you will parent them to the root bone here so that you can move all your character at once okay now let's take a look at our grease pencil character let's get here and see how everything is made so first we have the mouth that has six frames here that we can see because the time offset modifiers we have seven here are enabled so let's disable them and we can see that we have six frames of our mouth and then we have the eyes the eyes we have five layers for the eyes two layers for each eyes and we have one layer for the irises so if we hide these two layers here we can see that we have these white eyes here that act also if you go here as a mask for the irises so under irises we enable masking and we added these two layers so that when you move the irises with your rig they get masked by the eyes we need also strokes so we added these two layers with strokes above both the irises and now we have this and in each of these four layers we have an animation that closes the eye just note that uh, all these animations are interpolations so you only need like two frames or like here i had one frame for the open eye and then here another frame for the half opened eye another one before the end for a really narrow eye and then I have just two lines with closed eyes and then I used interpolation between these two frames and then between these two frames interpolation is done by doing Control shift E so what you will need to do is to create just one interpolation for each eye and then you will duplicate and change the material from a fill material only to a stroke material only and duplicate and rename your layers and then reorder them so that the irises are between the 
fill layers and the stroke layers. And then we have the head and the nose. We needed two layers, one layer for the head so that it can interpolate the shin and make it bigger like this for when our character speaks or opens their mouth. And we need also another animation for the nose. So we have this animation here in this nose layer. It's only two frames, one with this closed flower and one with this open flower. And then we have a mask. You see, if you hide the nose layer here, you can see that a chunk from the head layer is hidden here. So we have an animation for this part in this head layer and another animation, a very short one in this layer. And now we can animate these two separately using different drivers. Let's enable our modifiers. You see that one driver will change the shin and another driver will be able to open and close the flower and we can do them simultaneously and also uh, independently. Now we have hand R, right hand and left hand. These also have just two animations here with two shapes. Let's disable the modifiers again. So we have one with the default hand and then one with the pointing finger in each of these arms or hands. And you can add as many shapes as you want, just like we did with the mouth here we had six mouth shapes and you can have more. For the feet, we have the right foot in front of the body here and then one behind. We have also uh, one arm behind the body and the other one is in front. In uh, the Peppa rig, we had the two legs behind the body. That's why I had them in just one layer. And then finally, we have the shadow. It is semi-transparent as you can see. If you select the layer here, you see the opacity is like this and also note that the mask of the the nose here is completely transparent okay now let's take a look at our bones let's see what are the deforming bones deforming bones are the bones that directly deform or control our vertices or our points like this one here for the mouth if you hit g you can move the mouth or this bone that control the iris and the other bone is disabled x here so you see that this bone directly controls this iris and this one also and then you have this bone that doesn't control the iris but controls these two bones and by controlling them it can control the vertices but indirectly so these two are the forming bones and this one is not and the deforming bones will need vertex groups to control the vertices so if select our object again you can see all our vertex groups here let's go to weight paint mode you see that the body entirely is painted red and this body vertex group go again to object mode select this bone is connected to this bone that is named body. I won't go into much detail about this because we already talked about it in previous tutorials. And we have the introduction to rigging video that you can watch to get the basic idea on how to rig with grease pencil if you never rigged before. But how to select like all the shapes in all these frames. So let's take for example the mouth. Let's select the mouth layer here. If you want to assign the vertices of the mouth to the mouth vertex group, you will need to enable multi-frame here and then select all your frames. And then while the vertex group mouth is selected, you hit assign and this is it now let's go to our modifiers panel and see how these modifiers work so we have all these time offset modifiers one for the mouth for the right eye the left eye the shin the nose so this one for the mouth uses fixed frame and all the others also use fixed frame and their influence we added a pass index one or you could just select i guess the mouth layer and change this pass to zero then we have the right eye and the left eye modifiers and this time the influence uses pass index two here we can just choose a layer because we have two layers if you remember we had a layer for the stroke and the layer for the fill that's why we use pass index 2 and under our layers here i r and the relations we have pass index 2 and for the eye mask r we have also pass index 2 for the left eye and the left eye mask we have pass index 3 and in the left eye we entered three and you see this purple here and the frame in all of this modifier that is because we added the driver here so just right click and click add driver and then you can edit your driver here or you can go here when you see the cross you get it like this choose your 
drivers panel here we disable this show selected button here to see all our drivers let's check our drivers let's select the drivers tab from here so this is our driver for changing the mouth shape and it has this value of minus var multiplied by 70 plus one by default i think it's like just var plus one so let's put it to default you will have to choose your armature it's the alien armature and then the bone that you want to control the mouth and that is this one it's called mouth shape and then we have x location that is the local x of this bone that's why it's local space here because we want the mouth shape to change when we move this bone on its x axis or on the global z axis and also we have a bone constraint here let's remove it for now so that the bone can move freely on the side i also locked the y and z so that it can move only on its x axis if you move the bone here you get nothing you get that blank frame because it goes to frame zero but if you move it like this you start seeing that it will change the shapes but it's very slow that's why we need to multiply this var the value here can be anything for this case 70 worked for us and it gave us a rather fast shape shifting but i want the shape to change when i get my bone up and not down that's why i changed var to minus var we have this but if you get it down, you go to frame zero and you start to loop your frames. That's why I added my constraint here. So you add a bone constraint. It's called limit location. You choose minimum X, I think. Remember to change this to local space. And now, no, not minimum, but you change the maximum. And like this. So now the bone doesn't go lower than this. And we don't get that blank frame. For the right eye you see we have minus var multiplied by 300 and we want it to go down to close the eye you see that here it's minus and for the left eye it's positive so that they work the same and if you hit x here you can close both eyes together now to the shin so this is the bone it's called mouth size x location again and local space and when it goes up it will it will change the shape of the shin this if statement that you see here is to prevent the driver from going to frame zero also so if we delete this if statement and then go down we will get this you see it's glitching that's why i created this if statement that says that when var goes under zero it will turn to one so that our driver will play the animation forth when we get the bone up and then play it backwards when you get the bone down and when it hits frame one it stays at frame one even if the value here is under zero we have also a bone constraint and that is because this bone controls another driver that we will talk about when we get here so now for the nose it's a very simple driver that will change between two frames and also for the right hand and the left hand we have this bone that changes the shape for this hand and this bone for this hand now to the mouth scale here we have this deforming bone for the mouth and the scale of this bone is controlled by this one so we have two drivers for that one controls the x scaling and one controls the y scaling you can see that we have different multiplications in the x it's multiplied by 10 and here multiplied by 50 so that the mouth when scaled it will get bigger on the y axis here we get this shape and if they are equal like here 15 and here also 15 we get this shape and it's kind of ugly that's why i prefer to get like a non-uniform scaling you see now why i added this limit location because i don't want the mouth to get really huge let's disable them temporarily you see that i can get the mouth as big as i want and then i can get this reverse mouth it could be something you want to do to get a sad mouth shape just with one drawing but i didn't want that that's why i added these constraints and then we have these to scale the shadow so the scaling of the shadow is controlled by this bone going up and down and again it's the local x of the body root when it goes up it will scale down this bone and here also i added an if statement that says if var is bigger than one the value will turn to zero so that we don't get negative scaling so if you remove this if statement from here the shadow will get smaller it will disappear and then it will get bigger again but with our if statement here it will go to zero and stay at zero so i guess this is it this file again is available on gumroad for five dollars thank you for watching and see you in another video peace